Early in the 22nd century, humanity escaped from Einstein's cage. The giant ring-shaped engines of the node drive gave us the power to leap to the nearest star at many times the speed of light. After centuries of dreaming, we were finally free to leave the cradle of our home world. It took us years to build the Earth's first colony ship. The Nova Maria was a symbol for all mankind. Soon it was loaded with humanity's best and brightest. They prepared to depart, ready to inherit a galaxy which we had long ago decided was devoid of intelligent life. The universe was all out there for our taking. <laughs> Someone should have told that to the hirers. There came silence. No statement of intention. No declaration of war. Without even a demand for our surrender. They hit us without warning. Within seconds, our dreams of peaceful expansion were so many burning meteors falling to Earth. We barely survived the first Hiver incursion. Years later, we would find that we had faced only a small nesting fleet. We had yet to see the full power of the swarm. But the Hive was not the only threat. When we ventured forth, we soon encountered the ruthless legions of the Tarka. And eventually, the phantom fleets of the enigmatic Lear. And so, we learned how to build bigger, stronger ships, more powerful weapons. Humanity had to explore, expand, and even conquer, just to hold our own in a universe where weakness was extinction. In order to survive, we learned to wield the Sword of the Stars. chosen ones, born of the divine. We are shaped in the image of the great masters, born to serve them in the infinite depths. We are warriors, wise men, fathers, masters. And this is the time of our ordeal, the great silence, when we will prove ourselves worthy to join the immortal gods and hear their voices once again. It took years to rise from the world of our spawning. It took decades to reap the wisdom of our first quarry. But our wiles are unlimited, and our thirst for knowledge strong. We have lain quietly in the shadows for more than a century, skulking upon the darkened hulls of dead ships, raiding the periphery for slaves and secrets. We tear apart flesh and steel, mind and memory. Seeking the spark of truth. Seeking the gods of our birth. And always, we hunger for more. The time has come. We can wait no longer for the great masters to return. Our numbers increase daily. Our children hunger. Our females lust for war. This galaxy is unworthy of its gods. Overrun by ignorant, arrogant slaves, mindless insects, pompous lizards, chattering apes, blaspheming rebels. It is time to teach them all their place in a great scheme. They will learn to serve their betters or die. As it was commanded, so it shall be done. We will sweep all enemies from our path. In the darkness of this galaxy, we will forge an empire of light. 
We will be worthy. We will find the gods wherever they are hiding. We will end their silence and become their claws once again. Born of fire, born of steel, born of science, born of blood. children of the dust, and heed my words. I am first among travelers, lord of the night sky, and leader of the clans. I am the voice of the starborn. While you crawled, we flew. While you dreamed of wings, we knew the stars. We came down to share with your ancestors, but we returned to find death. Our females slaughtered, our worlds picked over like carrion. You have laid us a banquet of sorrow. You have risen from your dark depths, your twisting tunnels, your dung reeking cities, your pitiful nests of stone, and your fields of blood to lay claim to the very stars. Blindly you wander. Violating the tombs of my fathers, and so you lose your customers upon my wives and daughters. And I say, enough. Real war is coming. The travelers will yield no longer to any who crawl in land or sea. Find some other place to build your foul nests and fight your petty battles. These stars are sacred. And they are mine. So look to the skies, children of the dust, and see my coming. I am the dragon with a thousand wings. My people are no longer in hiding. And now, we talk in the skies like a murder of crime. Well, hello everybody, and I'm sorry for the longer than average intro of that, but I thought, you know, why not uh, do a bit of, uh, show a bit of the, uh, uh, the background of this game. And what game are we playing? Well, we're playing Sword of the Stars, the complete collection, which is available on Steam for about $25 last time I checked, uh, but, you know... Uh, it's a very cheap game, uh, and again, you can get the complete collection, which has the original game, plus three of the expansions, and it also, well, yeah, uh, three of the expansions, uh, which is more than enough value. I, I had this game originally a couple of years back, I just rebought it for my Steam, and uh, I decided, you know, why not do a Let's Play, since I just finished a Space Hulk Let's Play, let's get into it, and this is probably one of my favorite ever uh 4x strategy game, and I think all of you guys will like it as well. So let's go to single player. We're going to do a custom game, and we're going to do a uh, let's see here. The this it's a 3D map that you can uh, play on. Uh, let's see. Also, again, sorry if there's any type of background grinding noise. There is a furnace inside my house, and I, I can't control when it goes on. It is on right now, so sorry if that's gonna if that's gonna annoy some people. I can't control it, but hopefully my commentary comes in clear and you guys can hear it. But this uh, this game takes place in kind of a 4x strategy, Masters of Orion kind of uh, civilization esque uh, mixture uh, with kind of real time strategy segments for combat. Uh, so the map is three-dimensional, so we got to choose one. And, uh, you know, actually, yeah, we're going to go with this. We're going to go with a mini-clusters map uh, with a pretty standard uh, distance between stars. Uh, no differentiating between the sizes and normal resources. We're going to have full eight players. Uh, you know, no, we're not going to have eight players. Let's go with uh, let's go with six players, one of every race. 
Um, and let me just check here. Let's see. We want unlimited street turn length. Their combat turns are going to be about 360 seconds. Uh, let's see. Can I get this down just a, just a tad bit? I do not like the... Uh, I do not like the random encounters in this game. Uh, yeah, let's go with zero. Let's go with zero percent, because let's let this be a uh, empire or empire fight, because those random encounters can actually really fuck you later on. Um, okay, initial tech. Uh, yep. Okay, so this is going to be our starting bit. We're going to have six races, uh, which is going to be uh, one of every one of them. We're going to have unlimited turn, uh, street turn length. We're going to have a combat turn length of 360 seconds. Normal AI. We're going to have zero random encounters. There will be a, there will be alliances that uh, can happen, uh, and we're going to have 100% economic efficiency and research efficiency. We're going to have three starting technologies, two starting colonies, and we're going to have uh, 450,000 uh, credits, generic credits, whatever, uh, available. So we're going to we're going to create the game. This is going to be LP game zero one. Okay. All right. Let's see here. Okay. So let's set up my guy. We're going to be humans. I like humans. Uh, let's go with the red color. Oh, let's see. What's our badge going to be? Uh, there's a lot to choose from. Ooh, let's see here. We could go with that. That definitely looks pretty cool. Uh, yeah, we're gonna go with the we're gonna go with the imperialistic eagle. And let's see, what is our guy going to be or girl? <laughs> Equal opportunity leader of employment, I guess. Uh, you know what? Let's go with that. Let's go with space Hitler because let let's be evil this time. Let yeah, let's be evil. Let's see if that works. Uh, and we're just going to make sure that we have one of every race picked for this. That way, we don't get any doubles, and we have a pretty good range of representative uh, of the uh, different races. And then we're going to go with Zool. Uh, and actually, uh, yeah, there we go, Marigi. And actually, I'm, I hate the Hivers, but I'm going to include them in here because I think they have one of the more interesting styles of gameplay. And we're going to get into that when I get in here, into the game, we're going to talk about why I like this game so much. I just wanted to do this setup really quickly, and let's launch this puppy. And some pretty interesting uh, artwork there. Well, actually, no, that's a Marigi. It's kind of like a dragon crow thing in the behind there. System okay, here we go. Update. Okay, so where are we, for one? Let's see. We are pretty well centered here in the central part of this uh, uh, clusters. And... Uh, Okay, first thing we're going to do, we're going to manage our budget a bit, we're going to go make sure construction is at full, because in this game you can you can put some money into trade, but it's not a, a directly controlled kind of thing, so it's not really worthwhile early on to go with the trade, so we're going to we're gonna go completely construction, that way we don't waste mo most of our money. Um, and yeah, let's go to research. Now here's one of the reasons I love this game. It's always different. This is the research... Uh, forest, they call it. And each one of these represents a different technology field. But there are, there are hundreds of technologies. And normally that would be enough for most... Yeah, most games. But this one adds in something a little bit different in the fact that there is randomized technology trees. Now what that means is that... Um, okay, let, let's, let's put an example here. Uh, let's go to energy weapons, and we see right here red lasers and green lasers. Red lasers is research. That's one of our starting technologies. And green lasers is the next thing of, above that. Now, green lasers are something we would call an essential technology. Those, those are pretty much, you'll always have those. But something like, uh, let's see. Oh, this, this is actually a really good example. Deflectors. Something like deflectors is a non-essential technology. Most races don't really get any type of shield technology, or they have a very bad role for it. Basically, all, a lot of these are roles that you get access to. Now, shield technology is actually a very low role for humans, so we got lucky we got deflectors. Now, if I went and, and loaded up another game right now, more, more likely than not, that technology would not be there. Now, at some later point, 
maybe I would unlock a, uh, a shield technology through another technology tree, but it most often will be very different. There'll be different technologies linking it. So every time you play this game, it's a little bit different because, well, you might not have the same technologies, or you might have to completely rethink the way you build your ships, which is another thing we'll get into, uh, based on the technologies available, since it might not have rolled it for you. So we're going to go, but all that aside, we're going to research Waldo units, which is a uh, kind of like an industrial output ship construction thing. It's pretty much the first thing I usually get. So we're going to uh, we're going to pick up. Uh, hold on. Yeah, we're going to pick up Waldo units. We're going to research, research that. Computers and then we're going to labs, put quite a bit staff. of our budget right into that research. I usually go for 75% for the first... for Well, pretty much the entire time. 75% of my money goes into research. So that it's two turns to completion. Now, another thing about this game is that research... That percentile is not entirely accurate. Just like in real life... They kind of, these scientists know where they're going to go with it, but they could have a breakthrough early, so after you get 50% done on the research, it has a chance every turn that, uh, from that to complete. And sometimes it doesn't complete by the time it gets to 100%. It can go over budget. So there's a lot of things here where you got to kind of monitor how these research uh, technologies kind of go, because sometimes you could have a 20 turn research and that's only 20 turns to the 100% mark and it could still go for 50% more eating up your budget and that's where things like boosting research where you can put direct money into the into this come in problem is that has problems that can arise things like lab accidents from rushing in stuff like that so there's a lot of depth in here and we'll get to it like as it comes up i don't want to like fill the first couple of videos of this thing with just explanation so that was the research uh, and now the next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh